Hey guys, we are at the DEVCOM where developers from all around the world show their new games and of course uh, talk in keynotes about a specific topic. One of those speakers is Maria from Wildhawk Games. But before we start to get to know you a little better, I would like you to introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, hi guys. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a senior narrative designer and writer working for the Flying Wild Hog uh, studio uh, based in Poland. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I come from Poland myself uh, and I work there. And actually, I work in the industry for nine years right now. So this is like uh, a couple of sentences about me. And I'm very happy to be here. I'm happy that you are here. Um, starting is a good keyword because I want to take you back into the start of your gaming career. Do you remember when you started to think about a career in the games industry and what made you think about it? Uh, that's a very difficult question, but very important. Actually, I started my games, uh, like in general games career, like in my really early adult life uh, because I was uh, connected very closely to the role play game industry so the pen and paper and I was uh, I'm still our uh, author of uh, scenarios and uh, extra materials and the translator even and actually that was my part of uh, my field of expertise and uh, after a couple of years Uh, I just I just thought that maybe uh, that would be awesome if I could uh, use my skills and just uh, write some uh, serious scenarios for serious games in the game uh, video game industry. Uh, I had a very I have a very close friend uh, who's working in marketing in Creepy Jar, uh, based in Poland as well, and she was like the one who supported me to. Uh, send my portfolio to do the recruitment task and I was like okay I could try I mean that's difficult because I have to do the task and that's you know difficult and that's you know I wasn't sure of my uh, of my skills that day and but I I just I I, I just didn't want to uh, to refuse to her right so I just got the task I did it they liked that and they asked me to come for an interview Uh, where I got uh, another task, uh, let's say, uh, connected. And it's very important because it's actually, actually it was uh, a very, uh, very nice coincidence because I got the uh, task to improvise some scene. And since I was used to like doing this kind of stuff uh, when I was playing and uh, creating uh, RPG scenarios and, you know, running sessions and so on, that was easy for me. And we already got the vibe and we already uh, got to know each other and Uh, it actually turned out that we are all all those recruitment staff and me we are the role play games uh, fans uh, together so it like it was like uh, just a good vibe and uh, later on I just got the job and as a junior writer junior narrative designer as far as I remember and that it started it wasn't it wasn't very easy uh, at the beginning because I had to learn a lot about the differences between writing for uh, role play games pen and paper and video games I actually uh, had a past with uh, video games since my early childhood because my brother like he he taught me to play the games and uh, in my teenage time I just got some break because I was more into the role play pen and paper and they then I came back to video games after uh, like a uh, gap of 10 years let's say so it was new to me new technology new kind of games that were appearing on the market and it wasn't that easy but yeah I <laughs> caught up uh, like I uh, I did catch up and uh, it, it was like uh, the very beginning of my career which is still here so I'm still here so <laughs> it's, it, it went fine but how did you achieve your skills in writing uh, those stories Did you have any uh, colleague w where you went on or did you uh, visit any courses on writing? 
How did you manage that? All the things you said, actually, I did. Because, um, first of all, I, when I came into industry, I already thought that, okay, I need to uh, like collect new skills. Because it's different, as I said before. Uh, it's an uh, interactive medium, uh, which is different from the pen and paper games, because they have limits. Uh, it's not only you know our imagination that drives it, but also the engine, the production <laughs> thing, and, and the deadlines. So uh, I really wanted to know the stuff um, in terms of the screenwriting. So I uh, graduated from a couple of schools uh, of film and TV series, um, screenwriting, screenwriting, screenwriting cor courses and schools, but um, it wasn't enough for me because it's um, it's the main difference. Uh, a video game. It's an interactive medium, and the film and TV series, it's not. So uh, all the basics I gathered, I learned uh, a lot about, you know, hero's, jo hero's journey uh, archetypes and so on, which is very popular and uh, very uh, commonly used also in g video game industry, but it's not enough. I needed to delve more, to do some research, to uh, watch some GDC stuff on YouTube, to uh, take active uh, participation in uh, panels, um, talks, uh, interviews with smart people that are, you know, uh, standing behind big titles. And uh, once I uh, came up on Susan O'Connor, she was, uh, she used to be a main author of the Bioshock, uh, among others. And she's the one that uh, is running the narrative department, which is the, let's say, school, academy, GDC-related uh, uh, group and, uh, and company that gives uh, uh, the, the, the lectures, that runs the lectures, the workshops, uh, uh, offers um, spe specially on the narrative design. So I got, uh, I got uh, like a couple of times I, I was there. I just uh, applied for uh, being a part of the course and I graduated for her master, ma from her master class, a couple of uh, weekend courses, uh, all dedicated to writing, especially for video games. And yeah, so a couple of courses more and I'm still learning if something is new on the market that offers some uh, new way of teaching how to write for games, I am definitely there. <laughs> yeah. So you can say that you are definitely dedicated to your job. <laughs> I'm wondering for uh, any viewer who's not familiar with all the tasks a senior narrative mm -hmm. designer and writer have to do, could you explain to us what exactly these jobs do? Uh, Uh, according to the sources and the talk that I already gave today, uh, these are two separate specializations, uh, scopes of responsibilities. Uh, but actually, mostly what I do is to talk to people and communicate with uh, other departments of design. Because uh, we can, of course, we are responsible as writers for writing the story and the plot. Uh, we are responsible for writing the character arcs, the dialogues, the in-game text that are already in the game when implemented. And this is what I'm doing as a narrative designer. I implement the dialogues, I implement the lines. I am also supervising the recording sessions with the actors. Uh, I am also making sure that the mechanics that are in the game are con contextually uh, actually fine, so they fit uh, to the core fantasy of uh, Of the, of the thing that we want to sell to the players. If, if they are uh, dreaming of being a vampire hunter, we are doing our best to make the narrative looking like you are and you are engaged and you can be experiencing being the, uh, the, the vampire hunter. Like. So uh, not only I'm doing not only the story and plot connected things, I'm just uh, taking care of the whole narrative and narrative design. So everything, every element is coherent to the fantasy, to the, uh, it fulfills the dreams that we are selling. And this is, this is a very difficult question because I can say that I write lines, I write cutscenes. Of course, I do all those things, but also I have to bear in mind that um, the player needs to uh, experience this story, needs to think of it, of, a, uh, of, a, of something that, he, uh, that his agency is important. So he should know the story, he should uh, reveal, discover the story through his actions. And this is very difficult. <laughs> All right. 
That was a really good answer. I'm uh, looking forward to your next because if I look into your Vita, you got very big titles uh, like Evil West, Shadow Warrior 3, Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts, and that are just to name a few. Um, I'm wondering what or do you have any idols that inspire you in the way you write stories or create characters? Susan O'Connor, definitely. She is the one uh, who inspired me and showed me uh, this way of um, approaching the narrative design uh, when I'm working uh, on a project, particular project. So uh, she is the one, uh, and all the all her courses, uh, courses and and workshops, I do recommend for people who are interested in the topic. Uh, I also like uh, Molly Maloney. She used to uh, work with uh, Telltale Games, uh, and she also is a narrative designer. And uh, she was the first that introduced me to the idea of uh, this um, distinction between narrative designer and writer. So uh, I don't have any idols at all, but uh, there are people who are um, more experienced than me and um, because of that smarter than me in this field and uh, I am uh, following them and, uh, and, and read and watch anything they share uh, their knowledge on, right? So YouTube or just, you know, some blogs and so on. So, uh, yeah, I can say uh, these are my two favorite females and uh, Sam Lake from the... Remedy Entertainment. He was uh, responsible for writing Max Payne, which is my favorite game. One of <laughs> one of them, but yeah, really on top. And some like uh, he also uh, shares his knowledge on uh, various uh, doing various lectures and giving various speeches. And I actually uh, had a chance to meet him personally at Digital Dragons a couple of years ago in Poland. Uh, yeah, and that was actually he, he was one of the of the uh, persons responsible for my field of expert expertise as well that I uh, really uh, admire. And yeah, that, that could be, if I call someone an idol, they, these would be those three persons, I guess. All right. Um, in our next question could be a little bit challenging because challenge is the right keyword. What is the most challenging part when it comes to creating a character for a video game? Uh, actually, uh, making him believable and making him resonate with the player. Because... Uh, Actually, we can write a lot of lines that will, you know, uh, will fit the situation, the context, but it's hard to match it, uh, the, the match the context and the character itself. It's like uh, this. This process is very difficult because um, the the character actually grows with writing through the whole entire process of making a story for the game and making the game. Uh, you can uh, just, you know, uh, find his language, his character, uh, right, not in the beginning. You, you can just uh, find it in the end of the, you know, process of, uh, of, of making the game. So uh, nearly when the game is released and then you just see that, okay, so this is the language, this is the behavior that he should have, right? So I will just, if I have time, if I had time, I uh, rearranged some lines or re uh, managed to rewrite some lines just to make sure he is believable or she is believable. Making it, like making him this, uh, it, it's it's a nice uh, ni nice name for it. It's like a 3D character. And it's not in terms of, you know, model, but in terms of character. So he has all the features that uh, that a human can have. Right, and this is difficult because um, we may say that as writers, uh, you know, the dialogue should be natural, the the way it is in the everyday life, but it's not. Uh, it can be, it, it should be as as natural as it can be, but it's not uh, exactly the way we speak uh, in everyday life, right? So this is difficult to put uh, into characters' mouth those unnatural, natural <laughs> lines, right? And uh, yeah, and this is very difficult, th that seeking the character in, in a character when writing, uh, when writing him or her. Uh, it's easier when it comes to uh, a good communication with, for example, concept artists or animators 
who are responsible for making the character alive, right? And when you see the uh, the concept art, when you uh, see how the character moves throughout the levels through the game, it's easier to somehow um, imagine how the character should behave, should talk like, and uh, the more those uh, little beats, those uh, elements of narrative design, which is also the concept art and the animation and the movement and so on, uh, the more you find the character. And But this is a very long process. And I, I think the language that the character speaks, this is the most challenging part. All right. One thing you mentioned earlier was uh, your passion for pen and paper, and RPG games, and also uh, live action roleplay scenario games. I think, if I remember correctly, you already named some differences, but uh, just to make sure, which uh, what are the difference in, uh, differences are in your approach to write those compared to video games? Actually, uh, video games have limits. Uh, and we can argue, of course, that role-play games also have limits because they have rules, guidelines, and uh, manuals uh, exploring and exposing those rules. But still, uh, when you uh, sit with your friends or people uh, to uh, play a game, to run a session, uh, it's up to your imagination how you tackle the beginning, how you, uh, how you just uh, get the players through the adventure. It's there also ideas to incorporate, to be incorporated, or not, if you decide uh, to uh, not like involve their ideas into the scenario, but you can do it. So you have a lot of tools that actually appear like uh, out of the blue suddenly because someone has an idea and you take it and you put it in your scenario and that's fine, it, it works, right? So it's all up to your imagination. Of course, you can be um, playing, you can be playing the game uh, according and along uh, with the rules. Uh, which actually is uh, is the mechanic of the of the system, for example, of the setting. So you use this kind of dice and instead of this kind of dice, let's say. But it's still every session will be different, right? And it will be different, like in a various like uh, various ways and many many ways, right? And when you when you take the video game, uh, of course you can also if it's for example open world or something, or a big game, uh, you can uh, play through it in different ways. But there is a limited uh, like limited uh, number of those ways. It's not, it's not all up to your imagination. It's more up to uh, the designer's plan how to limit it. And this is the first thing. And the second thing is, of course, the production and the uh, technical side of it. So the engine, the possibility of what can be implemented in the game. And it, uh, it's very difficult to match those elements together and to be aware that when you write a cutscene or when you think of a character in a scene, you have to be sure that it's something that is possible from the production side point of view and from the technical point of view as well. So it's a, like a team effort. It's a team effort that actually is, uh, is it's more visible in the game, video game industry when it comes to a video game and uh, as compared to the role play game. Yeah. One thing I found out uh, when did a little bit of research is your, uh, you are saying that you love video games. And If I look into your Vida, some might uh, sp uh, speculate that RPG games is your favorite genre. But I found out in our, in, in our talk uh, earlier that it's not the case. Which uh, which genres is your favorite, or Actually, which, which do you I, like as well? I do like uh, the most linear short games, really. So double A's, uh, it's kind of my, my favorite. Uh, the the ones that actually don't uh, don't requires that much time or uh, patches to make it working, like right? to make it work. Uh, so uh, if I have like a big game, uh, for example, like uh, Assassin's Creed, yeah, for example, or Cyberpunk or Witcher and so on, I would love and I would appreciate it. But I probably, like most probably, I would not have time to finish it. And I like games that I can finish. <laughs> This is actually my uh, my point of view. And uh, like uh, uh, nine, 16 or like 10, 12 
hours of a game, it's something that uh, I can manage to do it like in a short time so that I would remember uh, remember the experience of playing it, uh, both in case of um, the story, of course, and the mechanics and uh, the whole system around uh, implemented in it. And I, I would have this uh, very fresh um, memory of the experience. And that's what I uh, value the most because I can be inspired very quickly by it. All right. Speaking of games, what is your go-to game at the moment? Uh, and I would here argue with myself because <laughs> right now I'm playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, trying to catch up before the Mirage is going to be released soon. So I'm a big fan of the Assassin's Creed series. Uh, yeah, I know uh, it's not a perfect game in case of story and dialogues and so on, uh, but the lore, the the art uh, side, and the whole you know the the, the game world that is presented to the player. I love it. I love the uh, coming back to the past and recreating the past, uh, especially like the Syndicate, which was a terrible, terrible game. But I do appreciate this London of 19th century, so the Victorian London. And uh, right now, the the latest version, uh, which is uh, edition, which is Valhalla, uh, I have a, a special feeling. It's it, it has a special place in my heart because it's the the Viking era, and me and my husband, uh, we are like a part of the reenactment group of Vikings, uh, especially my husband. So uh, this is something that we do appreciate and uh, we enjoy it much. But actually after I, I played the first time, I just turned it off after I got like a clueless and uh, silly side quest. And I was like, come on, Assassin's Creed, you can do better, right? And uh, actually I came back to Valhalla just to make sure I know what to, I know the, Uh, the product, so to discuss it, right? So to have some kind of opinion uh, about that. So yeah, right now I'm playing Assassin's Creed, which is not my favorite genre because it's big, it's long, and uh, yeah, and this is it. But that was wondering for me. You, you said uh, you enjoy games which you can uh, finish in a, in yeah. a short amount of time, if you call it. And I think Assassin's Creed games. <laughs> Mostly are something around 30 hours. Yeah, even I'm more. Not uh, I'm I'm not a you know a quick player. I I love to explore. I love to think of it. Uh, just you know enjoy the uh, the game world. So probably for me it would be even longer. No shame. I'm, I'm exactly. But actually, <laughs> I uh, finished Diablo. I mean the main path, the the main story, like uh, like in two weekends. So that's actually, yeah, that's, that's for me, it's quite quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm the same kind. If I got an open world, I need to explore every corner. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I need to uh, see, there might be a boss, there might be some yeah. loot. Better go and look for it. And if, if there's nothing, then, then it's okay. But I need to look and make sure. <laughs> yeah, I need to make sure that I know everything and I can uh, discuss every detail there to, you know, state some opinion about that. Yeah. This is A few hours ago, you talked in your uh, key panel about the meaningful differences between a writer and a narrative designer. So mostly of our viewers uh, aren't be able to hear at the Gamescom. Could you give us a quickly brief insight? What is the difference between them? Uh, sure. Actually, uh, my favorite thesis about it, it's stolen from Molly Maloney that I uh, mentioned uh, about earlier on. It's like uh, the writer is uh, responsible for the character in a story and narrative designer is responsible for the player in that story so that those two elements combined would come out as a, a comprehensive narrative. So a uh, narrative designer just uh, takes care of the player just to uh, the player be uh, told and be delivered uh, the fine coherent story and writer just um, writes and takes care of the motivation of the character that actually drives the motivation of the player to explore the game. I so would say. it's it's the best of both worlds uh, to make to make the game perfect, coherent in a and sense. playable. Yeah. All right. One last question is, uh, if there is any dream uh, franchise you would like to write a story for and what scenario could look like? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, there is the franchise I would eagerly uh, work on. Maybe someday, maybe in the future. Actually, uh, two franchises, I guess. Uh, one is the uh, Dishonored series. Definitely is one of my favorites. And the second one, and I know that Remedy Entertainment actually is looking for the lead narrative designer <laughs> there. Uh, uh, they are doing the remake of Max Payne. So, oh, okay. yeah, maybe in the future, maybe one day. But uh, actually, I do appreciate Max Payne. I know it's a kind of a old game. I mean, the first part, right? Because the, the third part was like a couple of years ago uh, released. But uh, I have a, in my memory the first part of Max Payne. And uh, I do think it's still like good enough to play it nowadays, uh, even though the art, the gameplay, let's say it's old and uh, possibly it would be not enjoyable that much and it wasn't like this 20 years ago. But the storytelling and the way of delivering the story, so the narrative design, actually I, I think it's, uh, it's uh, worth checking it even nowadays, yeah. All right, Remedy, you heard it. Yeah. We found someone for you. Yeah, I, I am a great fan of Remedy games, so yeah. All right. Thanks for your time. We are uh, done with our interview and uh, I hope you enjoy your stay. Yeah, I'm very happy to be here. It's my first time and I'm enjoying it that much. Yeah. So thank <laughs> yeah. you very much. No problem. You're welcome. <laughs>